Line number 20. Favorite races. Uh, oh. Charlie, that's not politically correct. You see, Charles Darwin's book came out in 1859. We still had slavery in this country. But not in Britain where Darwin lived. Hovind knows that. Darwin was using the word race to mean species, not ethnicity. Darwin said at some future period, not very distant as measured by centuries, the civilized races of man will almost certainly exterminate and replace the savage races. Line number 21. Charles Darwin was a racist to the extreme. From Descent of Man. But the most weighty of all the arguments against treating the races of man as distinct species is that they graduate into each other, independently in many cases, as far as we can judge, of their having intercrossed. This diversity of judgment does not prove that the races ought not to be ranked as species, but it shows that they graduate into each other and that it is hardly possible to discover distinctive characters between them. And from Voyage of the Beagle, on the 19th of August, we finally left the shores of Brazil. I thank God I shall never again visit a slave country. Picture to yourself the chance, ever hanging over you, of your wife and your little children being torn from you and sold like beasts to the first bidder. It makes one's blood boil, yet heart tremble, to think that we Englishmen and our American descendants, with their boastful cry of liberty, have been and are so guilty. Darwin said at some future period, not very distant as measured by centuries, the civilized races of man will almost certainly exterminate and replace the savage races. Line number 22. Darwin thought that women were inferior. He said a married man would be a poor slave worse than a Negro. Uh, Kent, Darwin was married to a very devout Christian woman. I never met his wife, but I, you know. Uh. Hoven gives as his source the autobiography of Charles Darwin, but searching the Project Gutenberg copy for this text comes up empty. From Descent of Man. With women, marriage at too early an age is highly injurious for it has been found in France that twice as many wives under 20 die in the year as died out in the same number of the unmarried. The mortality also of husbands under 20 is excessively high, but what the cause of this may be seems doubtful. Lastly, if the men who prudently delay marrying until they can bring up their families in comfort were to select, as they often do, women in the prime of life, the rate of increase in the better class would only be slightly lessened. Darwin said the chief distinction in intellectual powers of the two sexes is shown by man's attaining to a higher eminence in whatever he takes up than can woman. Whether requiring deep thought, reason, or imagination, or merely the use of senses and hands, the average mental power in man must be above that of women. He said man has ultimately become superior to women, poetry, strength, voice, etc. Line number 23. Evolution is a philosophy of life that says there is no God. We got here by one chance. Wrong on two counts. Evolution does not preclude a creator, only certain accounts of how he might have gone about his work. It is also not blind chance, but on the application of physical laws.
Line number 24. The philosophy of evolutionism is what drove Karl Marx. You see, we would not have communism today if it had not been for evolution succeeding in the mid-1800s. Uh, Kant, the Communist Manifesto was published in 1848, 11 years before Darwin published Origin of Species. And by the way, evolution was, the theory was popular way before Darwin. Okay, he, he made it more popular, but it was Aristotle taught a form of evolution in 400 B.C. The Egyptians taught evolution to Moses when he was in school. They said life evolved from the slime on the Nile River. Line number 25. You see, evolution teaches that only the strongest survive. No, it doesn't. In an environment where strength isn't an issue, the strong might very well die out to the faster, or the more nimble, or the smaller. It all depends on the environmental pressures. Look, if a whale goes through a school of fish and eats 80% of them, it's not survival of the fittest. It's actually survival of the luckiest. That's what's really going on out there. Line number 26. Evolution is largely responsible for what happened to the Indians. The Trail of Tears was in the 1830s, two decades before Origin was published. And by the way, evolution was, the theory was popular way before Darwin. Okay, he, he made it more popular, but it was Aristotle taught a form of evolution in 400 B.C. The Egyptians taught evolution to Moses when he was in school. They said life evolved from the slime on the Nile River. Line number 27. Hitler wrote the book Mein Kampf. You ought to read Mein Kampf and see how many times Hitler refers to racial crossing, superior races, or higher races. The major theme of the book is Germans are a superior race. If Kent isn't lying about having read Mein Kampf, then he's lying by omitting the fact that the book makes numerous references to God and how Hitler believed he was doing God's work by eliminating the Jews. Hitler said, I regard Christianity's most fatal seductive lie that ever existed. Of course, if Hitler had really been a Darwinist, he would have done nothing at all because he would have believed that natural selection would have taken care of the Jews without him doing a thing. Arthur Keith said, the German Fuhrer has consistently sought to make the practice of Germany conform to the theory of evolution. Line number 28. The Great Pyramid is positioned perfectly north, south, east, and west. We have no idea how they built it. We could not build it today. The Great Pyramid is off by over five degrees. Any cursory study will show how it was built, and yes, we could build it much more efficiently today, although we wouldn't have any purpose at all for doing so. Line number 29. The Great Pyramid is a neat subject to study. If you go up to the King's Chamber, you will notice an empty tomb with a red granite coffin. The coffin has the exact dimensions of the Ark of the Covenant. Using the most generous length for a cubit, the Ark was at most 53 inches on its longest side. That's less than four and a half feet. The sarcophagus in question is over six feet long. Okay, inside the Great Pyramid, you'll find the King's Chamber. There's an empty tomb in there, which I've been told is the same volume as the Ark of the Covenant. Line number 30. What about Pangea? Were the continents ever connected? School children are still being taught this theory. The only evidence to support this theory is that Africa and South America look as if they would fit together. Wrong. We can measure continental drift. See the evidence for thrust faulting in the past. Observe the trenches in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. That's why this... Pangea theory is so important to them because they can say, oh, it's being recycled. They'll say the ocean floor doesn't have much mud because it, be, it gets pulled under and you remelt it and it comes up again in the middle. So it's being recycled. Well, that may be. And see the correlations in the geography of separate continents that were once together. They don't tell you they shrank Africa nearly 35 or 40 percent to make them fit, do they? 
They don't tell you that Mexico and Central America are gone. Hey, Senor, que pasa? Donde esta Mexico, Panama, Costa Rica, Guatemala? They don't tell you that Europe and South America were rotated counterclockwise and Africa was rotated clockwise to make them fit. All of which acts to confirm this. Plates are moving, there's not much question about that. But that doesn't prove they've always been moving, and it doesn't prove the rate has always been the same as we see today. I think students should be told there are other options than what they're being taught in school. Now, I live right by Interstate 10 in Pensacola, Florida. Interstate 10 runs all the way from Los Angeles to Jacksonville, Florida. If I see somebody headed east on Interstate 10 at 70 miles an hour, does that prove they started in Los Angeles four days ago? Uh, no, they might have just got on at the last exit, right? And just because we see these continents moving a little bit today does not prove anything long-term historically. Don't fall for that propaganda. Line number 31. Camels have been found at the North Pole. How, Kent? There's no land at the North Pole! Line number 32. Today, the Earth is leaning over about 23 and one half degrees, which is what causes our seasons. By the way, the seasons as far as spring, winter, and harvest are not mentioned in the Bible until after the flood. Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years. Line number 33. The textbooks state that it took billions of years to form the Grand Canyon. No, Kent. Six million years. Textbook says over millions of years, the Colorado River formed the Grand, carved the Grand Canyon from solid rock. As over millions of years, as over millions of years. Line number 34. Carbon dating is based on the assumption that the amount of C-14 in the atmosphere has remained constant through all time. Absolutely false. Science has a number of different techniques for determining the amount of C-14 in the atmosphere over the past 45,000 years, the practical limit of carbon dating. You know, they've discovered the Earth has still not reached equilibrium. Radiocarbon is still forming 30 to 40 percent faster than it's decaying. Now think about that. If radiocarbon is still forming faster than it's decaying, that means the Earth is less than 30,000 years old, number one. And number two, you can't carbon date anything. Because you'd have to know when it lived so that you could calculate when it lived. You would have to already know when it lived to figure how much carbon-14 was it breathing at that time. Doesn't work. Line number 35. Don't fall for the statement they proved it is so many millions of years old based on carbon dating. Yes, don't fall for it because only creationist liars like Kent Hovind make that statement. As I said, carbon dating only goes back about 45,000 years. Line number 36. How does one measure the distance to a star? The farthest that we can get away on Earth is 8,000 miles. Parallax measurements can be taken six months apart when Earth is opposite its orbit around the Sun. So, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a star in January, and then we're going to look at the star in June, and we have now gone halfway around this monster circle. And we're going to get two observation points to try to enlarge the base of our triangle. Increasing that distance to 186 million miles. Line number 37. Even Charles Darwin said in his book right here on page 217, Charlie said, to suppose that the eye could have been formed by natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd. Charlie very much was confused about the human eyeball because it is so complex. Blatant quote mining. 
Reading the rest of the chapter shows quite clearly that Darwin believed the eye evolved and posited a mechanism for it doing so, which has been shown to be quite accurate by modern findings. Charles Darwin said, to suppose that the eye could have been formed by natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd. But then he goes on for three or four pages and says how he thinks it happened anyway. Line number 38. The Japanese trawler Zuyo Meru caught a dead fleece near New Zealand in 1977. Even other creationists acknowledge the finding of every scientist who observed the carcass, all of whom say it's a dead shark. Now, some people argue that it might have been a basking shark, and I agree, it might have been a basking shark. But the fishermen on board said, we know what basking sharks are, we don't think it is, okay? Basking sharks, they tend to rot away, leaving the head part behind, but there's a basking shark right there. Okay? It could have been a basking, it doesn't matter to me. They said the protein is 96% similar, yes, I know, but nobody's ever seen plesiosaur protein, okay, to know what it's supposed to look like. Humans and apes are similar, but have many differences also. Anyway, there's a lot of arguments about that. It doesn't matter to me, but some people get all bent out of shape because they even mention, you know, the Japanese catch of 1977. Line number 39. 1963 is when Greer and reading was taken out of the American school system. 1963 is when violent crimes began to increase. You know there has been almost a 1,000% increase in violent crimes since 63. His chart only goes back to 1950 and doesn't show that in the 1930s, crime was even larger. He also doesn't include the drop in crime rate starting around 1990. Line number 40. Look, fellow, if you believe in evolution, you got a much worse problem than I do. You have to get two cells to evolve out of the rocks in the same place of the opposite sex at the same time in history. Hoven knows perfectly well that cells do not come from rocks, since rocks do not contain organic chemicals. He also knows there was no sex, as bacteria do not reproduce sexually. Sexual reproduction took billions of years to evolve. If this conversation really did take place, as Hoven claims, the scientist would have laughed in his face. How can anyone trust this bozo or say that he is anything but a blatant liar?